Okay, guys. So today we are going to cover 7 4. Chapter 7, Section 4, which is all about translations. Okay, all about translations. 4 Translations. Probably the easiest of the isometries that we're going to study. Probably the easiest. Reflections could be as well. Okay, but um, a transformation, uh, translation, a translation is an isometry, which means it preserves angle measures, betweenness, parallel lines, lengths, all that type of stuff. Okay, so what does it mean? What does that mean when I say that? It means that if I had this, let's say in my coordinate plane, I had a capital letter H right here, okay? If I were to take that capital letter H and I were to move it to the right, move it up, move it to the left, move it down, or some combination of those, then this figure would still be congruent to that figure, okay? That's what it means to be an isometry, okay? When you take it and you perform your transformation, the two figures are still congruent. Okay, that's, that's the whole idea. And that's what the idea of a translation is. With a translation, it's almost as if, if you had this capital letter H and it was loose. It was loose, where you could put your finger on it and you could slide it around. So that's, what, that's the other name for translation. Okay, it's called a slide. So if you can take that and you can push it and put it on top, then it's a translation. If this H were tilted for some way, was like this, then you can't do it. Okay, you can't do that, okay? Because that would have to be some sort of rotation, okay? Which we already covered in 7.3. So that is the idea of these translations, okay? You could write a translation as a series of two reflections, okay? Let's say I had this. So I had this right here. And it, over here, it looked like this. And you're saying, okay, that's a translation. True. But you could have done a reflection here, okay, and gotten this, and then done another, well, I don't know if that's going to be perfectly lined up. That one looks like I drew it higher. Let me try that again. Okay, so if I did it where this was a reflection, and then I could do another reflection where it would map onto there. Okay, so you can write a translation as a series of reflections, although we never will. Okay, we never will. Uh, let's see. Let me see what else we got that we have to talk about here. So there are two forms, okay? There's two different types of notation, okay? And the first type I call, not, not official, I don't think you'll see it in the book, uh, you, I call it coordinate notation. And what coordinate notation is, it's a way that they define the translation. Okay, it's the way that they define the translation. So, for instance, for instance, if we had, if we had this, this is what it would look like. It would say, it's like telling you what the rule is. They would say, okay, so you take your x and your y, and we're going to add 3 to the x, and we're going to subtract 2 from the y. That is a typical example of something that I call coordinate notation. Okay? There's another one we're going to call vector, vector notation, or vector, uh, yeah, vector notation. So this is coordinate notation. notation. Okay, and so what you do is, if you had a point, let's say I had a point of 5, 2. Well, i got to perform my translation. So my translation says that I add 5 to the x, so that would be 8, and I subtract 2 from the y, so that would be 0. So my new point would be 8, 0. If I had negative 1, negative 4, and I wanted to perform this same translation, then I add 3 to the x, 
negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And then I subtract 4 from the y, or I'm sorry, I add 3 to the x, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. I subtract 2 from the y, negative 4 minus 2 is a negative 6. So what will likely happen here is they will give you the vertices of figures, okay? I'm going to give you the vertices of a triangle. So let's say that we have triangle ABC where A is 1, 5, B is 2, negative 6, and C is, I don't know, I'm trying to picture this, 1, 5, 2, negative 6. Let's do um, C is negative 1, negative 3, something like that. Well, let's go to our um, coordinate plane and draw that in. So I've got 1, 5, over 1, up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I have 2, negative 6, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's, let's write it in, that's A, and this is B. And then I go to C, negative 1, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and so here is my figure. Let's say, let's say, you guys know a little bit about this stuff now. Let's say that they said, what type of a triangle does that look like? Well, to me, to me, it looks like an obtuse, because this looks like it's an obtuse angle, an obtuse scalene triangle. So I don't think any of those sides are congruent. And this looks to be an obtuse angle. So that's what I would say. Now. They've got to give us a rule. So let's say the rule is x comma y, well, I don't know, x minus 2 and y plus 3. So that means that for every x up here, for every point, every point, I've got to subtract 2 from my x and add 3 to my y, and that's going to give me my new point. Okay? So, if I want to find a prime, 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. 5 plus 3 is 8. B prime, 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. And C prime, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Now, we could graph those points. But I'm going to show you another way how to do this. If they give you the rule, you can just follow the rule. This tells me for my x's, I go down, or I go left 2, right uh, up 3. So this means, if I look at this, left 2, up 3. Well, let's look. Let's get to A. Left 2. 1, 2, up 3. 1, 2, 3. There's my A prime. Okay, and you look at A prime. What was A prime? Negative 1, 8. So it matches what we did. Let's go to B and go left 2 and up 3. Left 2, 1, 2, up 3. 1, 2, 3. So there's my B prime. Okay, and that's 0, negative 3, and it follows what we did. C. Left 2, 1, 2, up 3, 1, 2, 3, C prime. Draw your figure. Oh, you know what? I have other colors. That's what I should use. Right? If I have the capabilities, I might as well use it. Which color looks good? Get some different colors up here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but let's try the purple. So I draw my new figure. Okay? So there is the, which one is the image, which one is the pre-image? This is my pre-image because it's my original. This is my image because it's my new figure. Okay? Makes sense? Makes sense. All right. All right. Let's see if it makes sense. See if you guys can uh, do one of these. I think you can. I don't think this is tough. Easy stuff, right? Easy stuff. So let's make a new triangle. Let's say that A is 
negative 32. Um, B is negative 32 is up there. Uh, let's make this one 4, 3. And let's make C um, 1, negative 4. 1, negative 4. Why did I do that? Okay. So first, graph the figure. Okay, graph the figure. If you turn in your notes without the graphs, it's not going to come. Graph the figure. Okay. And then uh, we'll see what we can do with that. I gotta give you a rule. Two x plus six and y minus two. Work your magic. Okay, so let's see. Add 6 to my x. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Let's give you a little more time. So I think I, I don't know if you guys had time to graph that. No, it's pause the video. I don't know if you guys are good about that or not. So I'll just graph the points. Negative 3, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. And that is a 4, 3. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and that's B. And then one negative four over one down four, one, two, three, four, and that one there is C. Okay, so the first point I gave you was three negative two. Let's try that next point. Let's try the next point. Ready? 4 plus 6 would be 10, and then 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and then 6 plus 1 is 7, and then negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. Alright. Alright, 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 alright. So let's graph it. 3, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Okay, so I added 6, I went to the right 6, and then I'm down 4, and there is my A prime. Next one, 10, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, negative 1, and that's B prime. And then I have C prime, which is 7, negative 8, um, that was 7, that was 10, right? 9, 8, 7, negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, There's my new figure. And sometimes they'll draw little arrows. Okay, they'll draw arrows to your new point. That shows you which one's the image, which one's the pre-image. All right? All right? All right. So I guess see if any students are here, because they could technically be here right now. And there's no way. So let's see if we can finish this. Actually, I think I'll probably pause the video now and we'll come back and finish this another time. Students are starting to come in.